It's a cold, bitter night. The winner of 2000 has left a lasting impression. Inside the warm confines of Michaels 8th Avenue, the comfort of the fans is apparent because ballroom boxing has returned. From Glen Burnie, Maryland, fight fans are ready and excited for another night of award-winning action. Ballroom boxing is back. Hi, everybody, and welcome to the ballroom. I'm Larry Michael with John Saracino. You know, John, we've been doing these fights the last few years. Each fight, each broadcast, very exciting. Fans entertain coast to coast by way of cable and satellite distribution. Ballroom boxing has really left the mark. Well, the series is getting bigger and better. We started it about four years ago, and I know we've had a lot of fun. And I think the fans have had a lot of fun watching the series grow. We expect bigger and better fights in the year 2000 and beyond. No question about that. You know, John, so many memorable moments over the years here in the ballroom. If fans watching for the first time tonight, if they're experiencing ballroom boxing, what can they expect? Well, it's not quite like Las Vegas, but the atmosphere is very intense. The fans get into it. It's good grassroots boxing, usually with very competitive fights, Larry. Are you ready? Let's go. All right, we'll be back with our first fight. Ballroom boxing is back coming up after this. Ballroom boxing is brought to you by Toyota, making it happen every day. By Budweiser, the king of beers. By Geico Auto Insurance, a 15-minute call could save you 15% or more on your car insurance. By Baltimore's Classic Rock 104.3. And by Philip Morris, working hard to make a difference. Welcome back to Ballroom Boxing. Larry Michael with John Saracino. Next to see battle will be Dana Rucker. Dana Rucker with the dreadlocks up high on his head. And who could forget his battle with Bellow November 18th of last year, one of the top five fights of the year. Well, that was voted by Bert Sugar's Fight Game Magazine, the fifth best fight of 1999, ending in a spectacular knockout. Dana Rucker was close to just about done. He'd been knocked down, as we see, three times and in fact after the fight Rucker didn't remember if it was two knockdowns or three he had been battered so bad somehow he found the heart to do this to Bello to knock him out and win the fight it was an incredible shot by Dana Rucker and really he went into the uh, the books here at Michaels 8th Avenue and one of the greatest uh, comebacks I probably the greatest comeback that we've had in our series since we started now Dana Rucker has a lot of heart. He's got some power in his right hand warming up. Let's get the official introductions from Pat O'Malley. Your attention please, ladies and gentlemen. The Maryland State Athletic Commission Chairman Carl A. Milligan Jr., Executive Director Patrick Pinella, along with Ballroom Boxing on Michaels 8th Avenue, promoter Scott Wagner and matchmaker Josh Hall present this six round bout in the super middleweight division. The referee in charge is Bill Holmes. Judging this bout, Kenny Chevalier, Gary Campaneschi, and John Gradowski. Introducing the boxers. First, to my right, out of the blue corner, wearing the white trunks, trimmed in black, weighing 173 and a half pounds from Parkersburg, West Virginia, with a record of four, 13 and one, three via the KO. Please welcome Gordon, the Scottish Bomber Finney. Out of the red corner, weighing 174 pounds in the red trunks, trimmed in organ from Baltimore, Maryland. He has a record of eight and one, seven by knockout. He was the winner by TKO back in November of round seven over Oswaldo Bello. That incredible brawl was ranked as the fifth best fight of 1999 nationwide by Burt Sugar's Fight Game magazine. Please welcome Dana Rucker. Rucker and Finney. Rucker is the hometown favorite from Baltimore, Maryland. Let's take a look at the matchup, John Saracino. Well, you see the height advantage for Gordon Finney, the Scottish bomber, 6-2. Weights are about the same. Reach advantage, though, is for Dana Rucker, the premier boxer in this matchup. Now, no denying Dana Rucker has been in a couple wars recently. In fact, his last fight, as Pat O'Malley mentioned, one of the top fights of last year. His opponent tonight, Gordon Finney, uh, it's not a pushover, but he is on a rather severe losing streak, John. 
He's lost 10 consecutive fights with a record of 4 13 and 1. Did take a look though. Finney did take a look at the tape of Rucker getting knocked down by Osvaldo Bello in November of last year. And he said, well, you know, maybe I can duplicate that effort. Maybe you should be wearing a kilt. Well, the Scottish bomber comes from Parkersburg, West Virginia. That's an interesting. Uh, I don't know what that is. The John, Scottish bomber. John, from you could be. West you could be the Italian stallion from Erie, Pennsylvania. He can be the Scottish bomber from Parkersburg, West Virginia. Okay. I didn't know they had any. I didn't know the Scots migrated to West Virginia. Oh yeah. You okay. didn't know. Could have asked me that. I would have told you. Dana Rucker. I'm sorry I brought it up. Dana Rucker has a great background in terms of an amateur career, and in fact, he has been susceptible to that one punch knockdown. And you know, I guess there are questions about Dana's uh, Dana's chin. Yeah, the beard. And uh, maybe not glass, but possibly porcelain. Well, some guys don't make the uh, transition from the amateur game to the professional game because it's two different things. It's like college football and pro football. Really not comparable. Good body shot by Dana Rucker. I'll tell you what, if the ropes weren't up, I'm not so sure that uh, the Scottish Bomber doesn't end up on his kilts out, outside the ring there. As there might be a question about Rucker's chin, there's no question about his punching power. He does pack a wallop. Gordon Finney in that uh, losing streak. The last nine were all decisions. So Finney must have some kind of a chin. He's only been stopped one time, Larry, in those uh, 18 fights, but he only has three knockouts to his credit in four wins. Well, he, he came in here touting his strong chin and strong left hand, and uh, right hand, excuse me, and we'll see if, in fact, he is the real deal as he scores a right hand to the head of Dana Rucker. Last fall, he fought Chris Mills up in Pennsylvania. Chris, uh, Any managed, a basketball player? Yeah, well, no, he's managed by Don Elbaum, longtime fight maven. Nice left hand by Dana Rucker. I think he shook up Finney with that punch. Oh, man, that left hand just whizzes by the chin of Finney. Yeah, look, Rucker looks like he's making, wants to make this a short night. Big left hand again by Dana Rucker. And Finney beginning to suck a little wind right here at the end of round one. Rucker needs to establish a little distance. End of the first round, the ballroom is packed. The fans are happy. We hope you are too. We'll be back with more ballroom boxing in a moment. Welcome back to Ballroom Boxing. Larry Michael, John Saracino, and John Scheinman. John, the first round of the books. Dana Rucker has a lot of power, but do you agree about his susceptible chin? Well, I, don't, I don't know who migrated from where, and I don't know if his chin is going to come into play here, but I gave that round 10-8 Rucker total domination without the... Uh, without a knockdown it just totally overwhelmed him I don't think we're going to see the chin tested here this is too much of a one-sided match I really like Dana Rucker he's a real good kid shows great boxing ability I, you know if he can uh, slowly climb back from his one setback he's only lost one time John Saracino well he, he, he's, he's young and uh, he's got a career in front of him that one setback is not going to stop him well, he is winging some punches with those so-called bad intentions. And the Scottish bomber, Gordon Finney, is just looking for some answers in there. I always thought one of the worst injustices you could do for your fighter is to continue to match him so easily over opponents so he doesn't learn anything just to keep his record perfect. We've seen it happen so many times in boxing, particularly the last 20 years. Uh, in my opinion, Dana Rucker deserves a fight against an opponent that, at least on paper, he has the edge on. The last couple times in the ring, there have been a couple of really serious wars for Dana Rucker. 
And I think this is good yeah, no question. matchmaking yeah. as he clubs the head of Finney. I guess what I was talking about, not this matchup. I, I don't have a problem with them taking a matchup like this as a, as a tweener fight. I'm just saying a lot of people think a perfect record in television and, and the rankings and all that. Guy's got to be perfect all the time. You know, right. I'd, I'd rather see a guy, if you're managing him, being brought up the right way, fighting all kinds of different styles. Then when he gets into a fight, he knows how to handle himself. I mean, a real fight. That's exactly right. So you're talking about a, you know, a paper record, basically. Precisely. Okay. So if it's unblemished, but you haven't fought anybody, what, good what have you it? accomplished? Yeah, nothing. I agree. I mean, but you know, everyone's looking for that perfect unblemished record, yeah, well, and when they, trying, yeah, you're trying to get a title shot or trying to get the big payday. And, right. You know, let's face it, it is a business first. And when they lose, I think it becomes less of a learning experience and more of a, a traumatizing event because oh, I've lost the fight. Yeah, it can be. It depends on the psyche of the fighter. Well, the psyche of announcers here is pretty strong as Dana Rucker tattooing the forehead of Gordon Finney. Man, Finney walked right into that left hand. Another big left. Wow. That was some body shot. He's digging downstairs, and he's really taking control with those left hands that are ribs of Finney. Another big left by Dana Rucker. You see Finney's hand speed slowing. He's lunging. He's leaving himself wide open. Finney comes in with a reputation of a tough guy. We'll see how tough here tonight yeah. against Dana Rucker. This fight is scheduled for six. The ballroom is packed here at Michaels 8th Avenue in Glen Burnie, Maryland. We'll be back with more action after a timeout. Welcome back to Ballroom Boxing, brought to you by Budweiser Beer. It's the king of beers. And the fans here at Michael's 8th Avenue enjoy their buds and they enjoy the action. Larry Michael with John Saracino. Two rounds in the books. Both belong to Dana Rucker, I would guess, John Saracino. Un unquestionably, Rucker winning the first two rounds of the fight. This is a fight unless he makes a really stupid, careless mistake. He wins easily. It looks like Rucker wants to end it in this round. Rucker's record is eight and one with seven knockouts. His one loss came by way of knockout when he was stiffed here in the ballroom about a year ago. I could tell by the look on Rucker's eyes the way he's setting down right now. He wants this fight not to go beyond three rounds. And he is unloading the entire arsenal. And, there it and it's time to blow backpipes for the Scottish farmer, Gordon Finney, as Dana Rucker wins by quick knockout. Well, the end came quickly, didn't it? And Finney is still wobbled in his corner. Good stoppage by Bill Holmes. Yeah. Wow, that was some left hook that really nailed Finney solid. And I think that's a good stoppage. Really, what's the point? I mean, he could have, what would have happened there if he would have uh, survived that? Rucker would have just swarmed him, and he would have hurt him worse. Yeah, he would have been subjected to more punishment at the hands of Baltimore's Dana Rucker, whose record improves to 8-1 and with eight knockouts. Excuse me, nine and one with eight knockouts. Smile on the face of Dana Rucker. This fight, not quite the battle his last one was. No, and you know what? You need an easy fight like that, which you said earlier, every once in a while. Dana Rucker will go back into the gym and wait for his next opponent. And here you're going to see the end of the fight. Rucker coming in, boom, with the left hook. End of the evening for uh, the Scottish Bomber. You know, promoter Scott Wagner and Mike Wagner both uh, very proud of Dana Rucker's performance here tonight. It's a young guy looking to climb his way up the ladder. Dana Rucker, 26 years old, now 9 and 1. Good fighter. Let's get the official time of the uh, knockout from Pat O'Malley. Your attention, please, ladies and gentlemen. The winner by TKO, 41 seconds in the round three. Dana Rucker! Uh, mixed applause from the crowd. They wanted to see this fight go on a little more, but as the referee's job is safety first in the ring, they did the right thing. No doubt about it. It was a good stoppage in that fight. Dana Rucker is the winner here in the ballroom. Now let's go to John Scheinman standing by with the winner, Dana Rucker. Dana, coming off of that fight last year against Osvaldo Bello when you went down three times and had to crush him with that, la that late round knockout, this had to feel pretty good. It had to. <laughs> it, it did, you know, and, and it's wild with a big change like that. Osvaldo Bello, like you said, dropped me three times to somebody that don't drop, you know, they don't have the skills 
to drop me once. You know, I mean, it's just a you know big change around. Was, was the fight like this a chance for you to just get back in the swing of things for this year, well, or no, does I'm this already, advance your career? I was your career? already back into the swing of things. Oswello, you know, Alan Watts, everybody else, they helped me get there. So what's coming up? But I, I wouldn't know. We had to talk to Scott. Okay, well, we, we, we've got a victory here for Dana Rucker. We've got a lot of support around here for him as well. Let's go back to ringside, Larry and John. All right, thank you very much, John Scheinman. The action, exciting as always in the ballroom. We'll be back with more ballroom boxing. Don't go away. Ballroom boxing is brought to you by Toyota, making it happen every day. By Budweiser, the king of beers. By Geico Auto Insurance, a 15-minute call could save you 15% or more on your car insurance. By Baltimore's Classic Rock 104.3. And by Philip Morris, working hard to make a difference. Welcome back to Ballroom Boxing. Larry Michael with John Saraceno. Before we get our next fight started, I want to invite you to the next Ballroom Boxing card here at Michael's 8th Avenue. It will come your way March the 23rd for information on tickets to ballroom boxing, call 410-766-7474 or check us out on the web, www.ballroomboxing.com. Let's get the official introduction for our heavyweight battle from Pat O'Malley. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the Maryland State Athletic Commission Chairman Carl Milligan, Jr., Executive Director Patrick Pinella, along with ballroom boxing of Michael's 8th Avenue, Glen Burnie, Maryland, promoter Scott Wagner and matchmaker Josh Hall, present this four-round bout in the heavyweight division. The referee in charge, Bill Holmes. Judging the bout, Kenny Chevalier, John Gradowski, and Don Risher. Introducing the boxers. Out of the blue corner, weighing 228 pounds, from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, with a record of four, six, and one, won by KO, please welcome Don Colbert. Out of the red corner, wearing the blue trunks trimmed in white, weighing 230 pounds from Baltimore, Maryland, with a record of three and oh, won by KO. Please welcome Robert Anderson. Robert Anderson, a last second replacement. He's facing Don Colbert. Let's take a look at the matchup, John. Well, we got the Predator versus the Big Dog. Pretty even size situation there. We've got a little bit of a reach advantage for Mr. Colbert out of Chester, Pennsylvania. Colbert uh, having a good long talk with the referee, Bill Holmes, to get this fight started. Originally, this was a six-round fight. Larry, they've reduced it to a four-rounder. Robert Anderson has uh, been somewhat inactive, but he's back in the gym, and he looks in pretty good shape for a guy that's been inactive. And in his corner, Mac Lewis, one of the all-time great trainers. These are heavyweights getting it started here in the ballroom. John, you, you know when a fight card starts, any given fight card, to any fight, whoever the loosest man is usually has the early advantage. Well, warming up before a fight, of course, is a key to starting out fast. And a lot of fighters do not warm up properly, particularly if you have younger fighters. Colbert's had 11 fights, so he had to know how to warm up. Robert Anderson coming in at 2-0. Last-minute replacement, as you mentioned earlier. Colbert fought here, Larry, November uh, first, I don't know if it was November 1st, but it was in November. Looked a little sloppy in that fight, we called. Yep. Colbert misses with a wild right. Robert Anderson from Baltimore, Maryland, so he's got some home folks with him here tonight. The big dog, 6'2", 239 pounds. Good ripping body shot in the clinch, and Bill Holmes warns Anderson for that body shot, John. Uh, I thought it was a legal blow. Thought so, too. Sometimes a referee gets blocked. Can't quite tell where a punch is landing. I'll tell you what, these guys, there's no warming up in a bullpen, Larry. No, good shot inside and a warning from Bill Holmes. And Colbert shaken by that tight shot. Now he's going to come over and warn 
Robert Anderson for a tough start to the fight for Bill Holmes, the ref, huh, John? Holmes almost got his block knocked off on that shot by Anderson. And Robert Anderson trying to come out and take immediately con of control of this first round. And he's doing it with a body attack, two-fisted. Anderson, though, has his mouthpiece open already, and this is the first round. This might be a case of who trained the hardest for this fight. Hey, what? Colbert's really throwing heavy shots on the inside. With Anderson going to the body, he's leaving his chin exposed, and I think Colbert's trying to take advantage of that. Colbert's done most of the leading here, but Anderson has been a fine counterpuncher thus far. Anderson getting a little wide with some of those shots. A lot of wrestling around here in the first round. Had been thought that Colbert would not be in a great condition for this fight. He's carrying a few extra pounds around the midsection. And you're right, Anderson's mouth is open, and maybe that's why he's fighting at such a quick pace. Maybe he thinks he's got to get this guy out of here in a round or two because he won't have enough gas maybe to go four. But if he's been in the gym regularly, he should be able to. Nice right hand by Anderson, a glancing blow. Colbert battles right back. That's some mean intentions behind that punch. Big right hand by Robert Anderson. And I believe Colbert wobbled, so you wouldn't know it by how he's battling back. And they fight at this pace for another three rounds after this. Another nice body shot on the clinch, and that could cost Robert Anderson a point. It does. For the body shot in the clinch. Robert Anderson is shocked, and you know what? That might make round one an even round. That's the way I have it. We'll be back with more from the ballroom. Welcome back to Ballroom Boxing. Larry Michael with John Saraceno. Proud to talk about the Communicators Award to Ballroom Boxing, the Award of Distinction. Comes our way, John. Did you ever think that would happen? Hey, that's a great honor. You know what? We I don't know what we did to deserve that, but I know the crew works very hard. And uh, they're putting on great shows here. So congratulations yep. to those guys. Start to the top, Scott Wagner, and everybody on down. Congratulations, guys. Job well done. Now warning from Bill Holmes. Will there be a check accompanying that Colbert. award to the? You're always looking uh, for some financial <laughs> remuneration. Yeah, I'll give you a couple bucks. So this is uh, breaking down a little bit, John. We've had some uh, some nasty tactics in some people's minds. I didn't think that punch was worthy of a point deduction. I don't know. Uh, referee Holmes is calling it tight this evening, and I think Anderson did win that round 10 to 9, but with a one-point uh, deduction at the end of the round, turns out even. Yeah, well, both these guys are throwing the proverbial haymakers. I mean, there's really not a lot of feeling out here. I guess four rounds are going to have to get to it. Well, so far, it ain't been pretty. But it's been brutal. Pounding away, Colbert with the right hand. That was a pretty evenly matched size-wise. 6'3", 228 for Colbert. 6'2", 239 for the big dog, Robert Anderson. Hey, what well, this is what people love to see in the ballroom series. Let's face it, there's not a lot of scientific boxing going on. Colbert's hurt. He's hurt bad. Anderson trying to finish him off. He's bloodied, Larry. Blood from the nose of Don Colbert. No, it looked like he was bleeding from the nose. Colbert looks like he may have regained his senses. He's got to hold on here. He's trying to do it. Just hanging on, gamely. Well, he's really arm weary, Colbert. No legs underneath him. Let's see if Anderson can finish him off. Another big right hand by Anderson. Colbert's got to get away from those ropes. Well, and Anderson's got to go to the body and get Colbert to drop his hands before he finishes him. Another oh. big right by Anderson. Pounding the skull of Don Colbert. That was a clubbing right hand, almost like a hook. Thrown from the opposite side. His eyes are clear, and this fight will continue. Anderson, better watch those drawers. They're about ready to come down. Colbert just trying to hang on. We can have an X-rated show here any minute now. The referee should help him up with them drawers. They are about to fall. I'm telling you. Come on, ref, help the man out. It'll be a full moon over Glenn Burney. As good of a round as Anderson's had, he's about to lose his drawers. He's only punching himself out. He's punched himself out of his pants. Colbert hangs on somehow. And Anderson will get assistance with the trunks from the corner. Big left hook yeah, by Anderson. Oh, and they clashed heads. The end of round two. We'll be back. 
We're back at Michael's 8th Avenue Ballroom Boxing brought to you by Toyota. Larry Michael with John Saracino. As always, the third member of our broadcast crew, John Scheinman. How do you have this fight scored through two rounds, John? Well, I felt Robert Anderson really made up in that last round for the point deduction for hitting during the clinch that he lost in the first round. I've got him ahead 19-17 after two. All right, thank you, John Scheinman. We'll be hearing from John throughout tonight's bouts. John Saracino, how do you have it scored? I agree with our, is that steamed colleague or esteemed colleague? I've got a 1917 Anderson. Culper trying to battle back here with some tight punches inside. Anderson throwing haymakers and ran into a left hand. Well, he's been running into a lot of shots. Very careless. Anderson, all offense, no defense, throwing all caution to the win. Colbert's growing in confidence here for some reason after being knocked down in the second round. Colbert fighting well, strongly here in three. Well, he sees that Anderson may have punched himself out. And I tell you what, Colbert was throwing heavy punches in that first round, Larry. He's still a dangerous fighter. He's down, we think, by a couple of points. But I don't think he's out of this fight. There was the point deduction for hitting late on Anderson. I could picture these guys trading hooks and whoever lands first wins the fight. They are just swapping tonight. And that last round looks like it took a lot out of Anderson. Anderson starting with a jab here in this round, trying to turn the tide. Nice left hand and a right. Colbert again in trouble. I think we got a couple of clubber langs in here tonight. These guys are just whacking each other. And neither one of these guys exactly young fighters. Robert Anderson, 31 years old. Don Colbert, 35. The Predator, Don Colbert, trying to impose his will right now. And Anderson, I think he's turning the tide a little bit here in the third round. Yeah, Colbert is coming on. And this is a round he needs to win to stay in the fight. Anderson really gassed right now. And he's got nothing. He's got no pants either. They're falling down again. I mean, do either of these guys know how to throw a jab? They are just throwing power punches, right hands, left hooks, and uppercuts. Anderson huffing and puffing. Culprit has to be growing in confidence. I think this is Culprit's round so far, John. No questions. Body work by Anderson in tight. This might go to the fourth and final round for a decision. Culprit, though, doing some good work. Culprit's got to have this round, Larry. Anderson really doing nothing offensively. He's just tired, John. Yeah, he had a little bit of body punching, a uh, couple of quick spurts in this round, but that's really been it from Anderson. The ring rust is showing on Anderson. He's been very inactive, and he's really, really wearing down as this fight goes on. His Tommy Hill figures are starting to show again, too. He, that guy needs a better belt. This piece of tape might help. Loving right hand by Anderson. He's landed that all night. Now he's going southpaw. Which is southpaw and tags Colbert with a left hand. But he really surprised Colbert there by going unorthodox, charging him, and hitting him with the left hand at the end of the round. That's the end of three. Back with the fourth and final in a moment. Welcome back to Ballroom Boxing. The knockout from earlier in this fight, Anderson. Getting in tight, where he did most of his damage early. Yeah, just a kind of a clubbing right hand and hit him behind the head. Blood from the nose of Colbert since that second round, and this fight is very, very close. Quickly, John Scheinman, how do you have it scored? 28-27, Robert Anderson. Um, it was really important Don Colbert win that round because I don't think he's going to score a knockout here at Colbert all. Colbert just got hit low by Anderson in the clinch. Anderson's going to give this fight away. Now, how do you not deduct a point there? Well, he, the referee is its at his discretion. A lot of blood from the nose of Don Colbert. John Saracino, how do you have it scored? Well, Mr. Scheinman and I are in agreement for a change. I've got a 28-27 Anderson also. Well, that's the first time in five years. <laughs> Anderson's been gassed from the second round, and here he comes throwing punches from wild angles. John, if you're Colbert, I think if you step back and, and really took a good look at some sharp punches at Anderson, you'd be very effective. What do you think? Well, I don't think he's got the uh, the legs or, or, or the hand speed to really be able to do that. He just doesn't have the skill. I mean, he's a, he's a, a decent fighter. But fatigue is set in on both fighters, more on Anderson. 
as Colbert has really rallied in the third and now the fourth round. Big shot by Anderson, just as you said it. He found some strength from somewhere. I mean, Anderson makes so many mistakes defensively based on his fatigue. And Colbert sometimes makes him pay. Anderson is unbeaten. 3-0 with one knockout. Don Colbert, 4-6-1 with one KO. Uh, Anderson in the blue trunks. Colbert in the black trunks with a gold trim. Well, let's be fair to Robert Anderson. He took this fight at a minute's notice, right. literally. So uh, maybe he wasn't in the gym for a week or so. Big uppercut by Colbert. Anderson, though, trying to hang in. Anderson just totally gassed. Look at him. I mean, he took a big break, took a deep breath. And now they meet in the center of the ring. Of all the fighters we've uh, watched over the years at Michaels, I don't think I've seen a fighter quite this exhausted, particularly in the fourth round of a fight. Colbert had the right idea with an uppercut inside against Anderson, who just bent over at the waist. Well, he's been hitting him with that right uppercut all night, and he's been hurting him with it. If one of these punches connects, John, uh, we'll have a knockout. Well, Anderson just shoved him down there. That was a shove. Very tough final round to call. It could be the decider. It could be the equalizer by the Predator. His glove, it appeared his glove hit the, uh, yes, it did. Good call by Bill Holmes. That's a knockdown. Yes, sure. it is. And I tell you what. No complaint from Colbert. He knows he got tagged. All Anderson has to do now in our scorecards is survive. Although I don't know if you automatically give him a 10 eight. You know, I might give him a 10 nine anyway, because the round was very close and that was a beautiful jab by Anderson. And that shook Colbert yeah. at the bell. We're going to be back with the decision in this four round heavyweight bout after a break. We'll be back. Welcome back to Ballroom Boxing. Larry Michael with John Saracino. Pretty evenly matched fight in the heavyweight division. Robert Anderson and Don Colbert, John. Yeah, it was a good fight. It was a close fight, relatively speaking. And, uh, you know, Anderson uh, had just enough gas left in the tank. If Colbert had a little more boxing ability. See, he knew what he had to do. The uppercut was there, just could not find the connection. Yeah, Colbert, a much better all around fighter. So Don Colbert and Robert Anderson go the distance, four rounds. Pat O'Malley's still trying to accumulate the scorecards, and looks like they need a calculator there at ringside. Now, John, these guys threw punches from every single angle. Anderson, very wide. Colbert, without a lot of stamina. Well, they're really just a couple of sluggers, and they're banging away trying to get each other out. And Anderson, I think, got the better of it by the virtue of the two knockdowns, even though the second one in the fourth and final round was just a mere touch of the glove to the canvas. Uh, referees, uh, uh, excuse me, the judges of Maryland have no discretion there. If the referee rules it a knockdown, which he did, it must be a 10-8 round if that fighter is already ahead in the round. Pat O'Malley has tabulated the scoring with the judges at ringside. He has the decision. Who won this heavyweight fight? Let's find out. Your attention, please, ladies and gentlemen. We have a unanimous decision. Judge Chevalier scores it 39-34. Judge Gradowski scores it 37-36. And Judge Richard scores it 38-35. And the winner, still undefeated, now 4-0, Robert Anderson. The big dog takes a bite of the predator. Robert Anderson victorious over Don Colbert. I think that is a good decision. I thought Anderson did what he had to do to win. Yeah, I had Anderson head by four points, and I thought it was pretty clear. Even though Colbert may have been the better technical fighter, Anderson got the better of him tonight. Standing by with our winner, Robert Anderson, is a winner in his own right, John Scheinman. Robert, you took this fight on short notice, and you really looked gassed, but you had enough for the victory. What kind of condition were you in coming into this fight? Well, well really, I didn't really train. I got in the gym for three weeks. But I ain't really getting no good sparring sessions, you know. Sometimes I spar with Sim Rockman and some, some other um, prospects come into the gym, and they wasn't there at the time, so I just tried my best to get in there, hit those bags, get those mitts, get those body bags, you know. I just kept getting myself motivated, kept doing it. But People at the same time, you didn't seem too concerned about trading shots with Don Colbert. Oh, no, no. I wasn't in that type of 
type of condition. I went in that type of, you know, that type of training of sparring every day like I normally do before a fight. So that's why I laid off, you know, took my time. Normally, I'm aggressive. I stay right on the fighter. Stay right on him. Get him out of there. Well, Robert, you didn't get him out of there, but you got the victory. It's back in action. Let's go back to ringside. All right, Robert Anderson is the winner tonight here in the ballroom. Back with more ballroom boxing after a timeout. Ballroom Boxing is brought to you by Toyota, making it happen every day. By Budweiser, the king of beers. By Geico Auto Insurance, a 15-minute call could save you 15% or more on your car insurance. By Baltimore's Classic Rock 104.3. And by Philip Morris, working hard to make a difference. Welcome back to the ballroom, Larry Michael with John Saraceno. Next up, Marlon Haynes, unbeaten, a local kick from Rockville, Maryland. And this is where great experience can take place for a boxer as young as Haynes. And that's where Charles Mooney, his trainer, comes in handy, Larry. He's a southpaw, difficult style to fight. Let's see what happens. Let's go up to Pat O'Malley for the introductions. Your attention, please, ladies and gentlemen. The Maryland State Athletic Commission Chairman Carly Milligan, Jr., and Executive Director Patrick Vanella, along with Ballroom Boxing on Michaels 8th Avenue, Glen Birdie Promoter Scott Wagner, Matchmaker Josh Hall, present the sixth round bout in the welterweight division. The referee in charge is Kenny Chevalier. Judging this bout, judging this bout are John Gradowski, Bill Holmes, and Don Risher. Introducing the boxers. First to my right out of the blue corner, wearing the black trunks trimmed in white, weighing 150 pounds. He is from Baltimore, Maryland, with a record of 7-3-1, and one, won via the KO. Please welcome Mike McPhail. <laughs> to my left, out of the red corner, weighing 143 and a half pounds, wearing the green trunks, trimmed in red, gold, and white. He's from Hyattsville, Maryland, with a record of 6-0-2, oh, won by KO. Please welcome Marlon Haynes. Haynes and McPhail, it's Rockville, Hyattsville, Maryland against Baltimore, Maryland. Let's take a look at the matchup, John. Well, you see the heights there, 5'10", Haynes, 5'9", McPhail. Weighing in about a six and a half pound differential in favor of McPhail. Reach fairly even. Two local kids from Maryland. Let's see what happens. Marlon Haynes last saw action October 21st of last year. Has never lost, has two draws. One was a uh, draw back on July the 23rd of last year in D.C. against Marcos Primera. And we've seen Mike McPhail here in the ballroom as well. Marlon Haynes is southpaw. John, that, uh, that always offers tough opposition to a conventional fighter. Charles Mooney, the trainer of Marlon Haynes, and uh, Mooney is uh, one of the best in the area. You can see Haynes really very, very sharp with his punches. He's, he's ripped. He's in great condition. And he is really a technician with that right jab coming from the unorthodox side. And he's elected to come out, jab, try to land the left. McPhail fresh off a win against previously unbeaten Adrian Davis prospect Juan Diaz. McPhail was hurt in that fight early. Showed a lot of courage to battle back and eventually win. So McPhail is a guy that uh, Marlon Haynes should not take lightly. No, but right now I tell you what, Marlon Haynes has come out pretty fast here in the opening round. You see the excellent hand speed he possesses and good quick feet. Good balance, too, you know. I mean, really, he looks like he's a very together fighter. McPhail, a very tough opponent, though, uh, with his track record coming off the canvas, bouncing back in many fights. Though McPhail's record of 7-3 and three and 1 might not be the greatest, he is one of those guys that kind of thrives in this atmosphere. Good left hand by Haynes. 
And Mc, McPhail has decent hand speed also. He's no slouch in that department. Let's see if he tries to land that lead right hand at some point here against the left hander. John boxing fans hear so often how it's tough to fight a southpaw and one of the reasons obviously there's less of them out there so you don't train against as many but from a strategic standpoint what's so tough. Well you got to be more aggressive against the southpaw Larry. And you know a lot of guys think well you just really need a good right hand you can stick the jab in your back pocket but you have to jab some too. Haynes doing some great work to the body. And McPhail acknowledging that with a nod as he moves off the ropes. Haynes really isn't allowing McPhail to establish any kind of a rhythm here. I mean, Mike, Marlon Haynes is very quick. Round one winding down. Check us out on the web, www.ballroomboxing.com. We'll be back with more ballroom boxing after a timeout. Welcome back to Ballroom Boxing. It's Marlon Haynes in the green trunks, in the black trunks. Mike McPhail, the pinstripe suit, is John Saracino, and I am Larry Michael in the ring, the third man in the ring, the very competent Kenny Chevalier. Not only that, I think Kenny Chevalier just won a big award, didn't he, Larry? Yeah, he's a referee of the year in the Baltimore Washington area. And he deserves it. Kenny Chevalier, just a class act. The, you know, really, you look at the uh, level of boxing we hear, have here at Michaels, uh, some great up and comers, some great stars of the future. Uh, a referee of the present is Kenny Chevalier, really. Does the championship fights. So, Craig, I always, always want to know how he does, you know, always, always looking for some helpful criticism. Kind of a student of the, he, of the game. Yeah, he really is. He really is. I'd like to see uh, Kenny go somewhere with. His refereeing beyond the shows we have here in Maryland. I think he's earned his shot. He has. He has more big things to come from Kenny Chevalier in the ring right now. Marlon Haynes in the green trunks continuing to set the tempo for Mike McPhail. Well, you mentioned earlier the difficulty in fighting a southpaw. Near that end of the first round, Larry, we saw both fighters tangling their feet, stepping on each other. And it does become uh, troublesome when you haven't fought a lot of left handers. But I thought Haynes got through that first round pretty well. Fail talking to him a little bit in there now. Well, I don't think uh, McPhail is going to outbox Marlon Haynes from the outside. It'll be very difficult. Haynes a long, lean reach. Terrific hand speed, reflexes. Well, put yourself in the corner of McPhail then. What kind of instruction do you give your fighter? Well, I think he's got to take a, a few more chances. And there he did right there. We'll shoot the lead right hand a little bit more often. And instead of trying to hit Marlon's head, try to go downstairs where the body's not moving as much. But he keeps aiming for his head. And that thing moves fast. It's like a little bullet. Well, again, hard to tell what McPhail's strategy is here in this fight. Well, he's trying to fight him from the outside, but uh, that's Haynes' game plan, and I think he's more equipped to win that kind of a fight. Well, let's face it, it's a tough fight for McPhail to win. And there was a lead right hand, and yep. it was parried by Haynes. Nice right jab by Haynes. This guy's opening up a little bit here in round two. Good left hook by McPhail. Another lead right hand. McPhail starting to come on a little bit. Beautiful left hand. McPhail drops Haynes. Shockingly. Yep. You can see he was working his way in, starting to land punches, hitting him with combinations. And against the ropes, that's a knockdown. Correctly called by Chevalier as the out. Round ends. Wow, what an end to round two. Shockingly. Mike McPhail drops the unbeaten Marlon Haynes. Wow. What a turnaround after Haynes really had his way for the first round and three quarters. McPhail backed him up along the ropes, let loose a combination, and left Haynes sitting on the ropes. That's a knockdown. It's got to wonder if Haynes can clear his head because he was rattled. 
Uh, he really was. He got hit by a couple of shots. So let's see if we can see. I think it was an uppercut, John, inside. Hard to tell. It was a left uppercut. The left uppercut was the punch that did the damage. Yeah, Mc... Haynes dropped his right hand. And McPhail made him pay. As we go in the corner right there of Haynes, who was winning easily the first round in the two-thirds, maybe. Let's bring John Scheinman in here now as Kenny Chevalier checks the corner of Marlon Haynes after the knockdown. How do you have it scored through two, John? Well, that vaults Mike McPhail into the lead of this fight after two. He's up 19-18. You know, you were talking about what McPhail needs to do. I've seen a whole lot of fights of his career, and he's a brawler. He's not a knockout puncher, but he wants you to get he wants to get you into a swinging punch out. And that's what he did here. He decided the only way to get through the jab was to go on the attack, and he did, and it really paid off. Well, he's, he's right, Larry, and really it started off with those lead right hands. You look in the eyes of Marlon Haynes, you, you get a little bit of the deer in the headlights look right now. I don't know if his head is completely cleared yet or not. Well, McPhail does have to turn this into a brawl because that's the, the way he's really going to win this fight. And you see McPhail mugging a little bit now, taunting Haynes. A lot of concern on the face of Marlon Haynes right now in the third round. This fight is scheduled for six. And Marlon Haynes has to come back strong in this third round. He's got to make McPhail think twice now about just moving in on him at will. John Haynes just scored with a straight left hand right to the chin of McPhail, who kind of left to move forward. Haynes with just one knockout in his career. Yes, good solid boxer, but not a lot of power. And let's face it, McPhail knows that. He feels he can move in and not be in harm's way. Typical of the ballroom boxing fights here, just uh, uh, the surprises just keep on unfolding. Big right hand by McFan. Yeah, counter right hand. Nice left hand. A lot of blood now from the mouth of McPhail. So some damage being done by Marlon Haynes. This has been a brawl so far. Haynes has got to remember to keep his gloves up after he punches. Nice straight hand by Haynes with the left. You see a split lip. Right, the lower lip of Mike McPhail has been split. That's a very dangerous situation. If a punch were to land on there, it could split even worse. Well, Haynes has got to move to McPhail's left. Sometimes he's moving right, and he's going right into the right hand, which is, of course, his best shot for McPhail against the southpaw. Now, how has McPhail followed up that knockdown punch, and how has Haynes followed up being knocked down? Well, I think uh, Haynes has rallied well here in the third round, but certainly McPhail is trying to put the pressure on. He realizes he had Haynes hurt in that second round near the end of it. But I tell you what, Haynes has come back very impressively in this round. The left hand of McPhail has been the key weapon so far. He scores again with the left which is surprising to get through any kind of defense. The right arm of Haynes held very, very low. See, he's wide open for the left hand there. Shot his hands by his waist. No question. Haynes got to keep that jab pumping. Round three winding down the midway point in this sixth round fight in the ballroom. We'll be back. Welcome back to Ballroom Boxing. Larry Michael with John Saracino. Pretty good fight right now. Mike McPhail in the black trunks with a white trim. Marlon Haynes in the green trunks. McPhail has scored the only knockdown of this fight in the second round. Dropped Haynes with a left uppercut right at the bell. Marlon Haynes, known as the mighty one, has not been mighty so far in the first half of this fight. Big left hand by McPhail again. He wants to start a war, and he's doing a good job of it. Change of jabs. Haynes not doing enough with the left hand, John. Just don't see him punching very much with it. Well, it's possible he's hurt it. There he goes, fires he's one there. It there. Well, you know what? Possibly McPhail has been throwing the right as much, and he's not able to counter with the left. Hasn't been there for him. Possible that McPhail uh, maybe got the knockdown too early and kind of uh, sitting on his laurels a little bit here. Well, I don't think that's what's going on here, Larry. I think he's trying to find a way. He may be loading up for a shot, though, is what he's doing. Well, <laughs> as he misses a haymaker. <laughs> Now 
There's a left hand by Marlon Haynes. Blood continues to flow from the bottom lip of Mike McPhail. Mike McPhail just said, uh, trying to get something going here. Haynes, really a good turnaround round here in round four. Let's bring in John Scheinman, third member of our crew. John, how do you have it scored through three? 29-27, Mike McPhail, but a good comeback round for Marlon Haynes. Up until this round, Haynes... It's not a knockdown. He got tripped up by Haynes. Go ahead, John. Up until this round, since the knockdown, Haynes had been playing right into Mike McPhail's hands by thinking that he needed to regain McPhail's respect by landing some big shots. He's not a big shot guy. What he needs to do is go by the old adage, stick and move. That's Marlon Haynes' game. Stick and move and score points with that jab. This kind of action is not going to help him. Mike McPhail, once again, stepping up the tempo after a lackluster third round. Really turning up the heat as the blood continues to flow from his lip. Well, John's right. He is standing right in front of McPhail. Allowed McPhail to back him up there. Really took a lot of blow, heavy blows. Big left hand by Haynes. Want to thank the good folks at Geico Auto Insurance for bringing you tonight's action. Geico Direct, one 15-minute phone call. Could save you 15% or more on your car insurance. We'll be back with more ballroom boxing after a timeout. Welcome back to Michael's 8th Avenue. It's Ballroom Boxing, brought to you by Budweiser, the king of beers. Larry Michael with John Saracino. Round five in the ring. Mike McPhail in the black trunks going up against Marlon Haynes in the green trunks. Round four, a very difficult round to score, John well, Saracino. I gave it to McPhail, and the way Haynes comes out, I think he realizes McPhail won that round two, and I've got McPhail ahead in the fight. But Haynes has got to find a way to turn this around, and that's going to start with his jab and his, and his movement in the ring, which is to hit and then step to the side instead of staying in front of McPhail. He's been hurt on more than one occasion when he chose to trade with Haynes. I'm sorry, with McPhail. Oh, what a huge knot on the side of McPhail's head. We. Uh, just got to look at that on the right side of his head. Just like a golf ball sitting there right next to his temple. I mean, that is hideous. Well, let's see if Haynes can tee off on it. John, as McPhail comes around, you can't see him from our position at ringside. The camera needs to be from the other angle, but we'll keep an eye on that swelling oh, right yeah, on the temple, right. right above the eye. You can see it if he uh, slow down there. Pretty good look at it. Nasty welt. Huge welt. And Haynes is uh, having a much better fifth round. It looks like McPhail is trying to load up again. He knows he's hurt Haynes on more than one occasion. And that could be to his detriment, really. Blood from the mouth of McPhail, also from the nose of Mike McPhail. Well, you see what McPhail's doing is standing right in front of Haynes. He's not punching when he's moving forward. He's a sitting target. by Mike McPhail just off the mark. Good left hand by Haynes. And McPhail loses his mouthpiece. McPhail, though, not backing off. Scores with a left hand and another left hand. And Haynes in a little bit of trouble now in the corner. Boy, McPhail lost the mouthpiece and he started to fight. McPhail just chasing Marlon Haynes. Another left hand by McPhail. Ken Chevalier, good referee, waiting for the action to slow down before he gets the mouthpiece replaced into the mouth of Mike McPhail. And this has turned into a very interesting fight. Good matchmaking by Josh Hall. Talk about the accolades that Ballroom Boxing has received over the last couple of months. Uh, as you said, John, team effort from the matchmaker to the promoter to the crew. Everyone involved, Mike Wagner at the very, very top ballroom boxing, a class act, and it shows in the ring. Round five winding down, the decider is coming up next. Don't go away.
Larry Michael, John Saraceno, ballroom boxing, sixth and final round. And one of the commission folks here in the state of Maryland trying to do some maintenance work in the ring as this final round gets underway. As the final round gets underway, let's check with John Scheinman with the scorecard through five, John. Very difficult fourth and fifth rounds to score, but I gave them both to Marlon Haynes. I've got this thing all even at 47 going into the final round. Saraceno, do you agree? No, I do not. <laughs> I got McPhail ahead by a couple of points now after I had Haynes ahead early in the fight. Tough one to score. The only knockdown of the fight came in the second round. It was a tight left uppercut by Mike McPhail that dropped Haynes at the bell. You know what? I wouldn't be surprised though if Haynes wins the decision, having scored it the way I have. See how this final round, the final round could be the decider. Right hand by Mike McPhail. I mean, if you really look at the fight overall, Haynes has really outboxed McPhail. But who's been the more active of the fighters? Well, who's been the more aggressive puncher yeah, and, and accurate one. and effective puncher? That's kind of the answer you're looking for. And I thought McPhail landed the more significant heavy blows, but did he land enough of them? Corner McPhail has done a good job to reduce the swelling on that big knot right on the right side of his forehead. The one that says Titleist? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're a mean man. Oh. He knows I'm Actually, only kidding. Not as big as a golf ball. It was a couple rounds ago, though. I like McPhail's aggression. That's what I like. Marlon Haynes, if he wins this fight, it will be on pure boxing ability. The aggressor has been Mike McPhail. But at times, I don't know how effective he's been at it. And that's been the problem. He's landed big shots here and there. Haynes retreating though here in the final round, John. That can't look good to the judges. Well, he's trying to land that lead right hand, that one shot that he hopes can turn it around where he can get him hurt and finish him off, but I don't know if it's going to happen for him. One of these guys is going to be disappointed at the end of this bout. Maybe both. Who knows? Maybe a draw. It's a very tight fight. Now continues to move, but he is slowing down a little bit here in round six, John. Well, oh, both these fighters have fought at a very torrid pace throughout the fight. We're seeing some fatigue set in. But I tell you what, Marlon Haynes has a terrific set of sticks under him. He just keeps moving around the ring. Fell scores with the combination as Haynes retreated. And when you're in tip-top shape. Huge left hand by McPhail. He does not want to leave this to the judges. That's that same left hand that dropped Marlon Haynes. That could have been enough to win the fight for McPhail if it's as close as we think it is. Good fight, good sportsmanship. That's the hallmark of ballroom boxing. We'll be back with the decision. Don't you dare go away. Larry Michael with John Saracena looking back. The only knockdown of this fight happened in the second round at the end of the round. And it was a key point for McPhail. There was a short left hand stumbling back in the ropes. Goes Marlon Haynes. Really shocked Marlon Haynes. Haynes is unbeaten. McPhail wanted to make this fight a war, and that's just what he did. Before we get the announcement, John Scheinman, how did you score this six-rounder? I gave it by the hair of my chinny-chin-chin chin to Mike McPhail, 57-56. That last round was so tough to score. It looked like Haynes was just going to peck his way to victory, and McPhail landed that big combination, and that just put him over the top for me. There, Marlon Haynes right there. Could he be facing his first loss as a professional? Well, I also had McPhail winning 57-56. But I wouldn't be shocked if the guy in the green trunks had his hands raised, raised by uh, Pat O'Malley. Let's check with Pat, see who won this fight. Your attention, please, ladies and gentlemen. We have a unanimous decision. Judge Risher scores it 57-56. Judge Gradowski scores it 57-56. And Judge Holmes scores it 57-56 likewise. The winner, by unanimous decision, Mike McPhail! Hey, 
we had it right. How about that? <laughs> Scheinman and Saracino were accurate. Good performance by Mike McPhail. He is a happy, happy young man. Mike McPhail from Baltimore, Maryland, just 26 years old, improves his record to 8-3-1 with the upset win over the previously unbeaten Marlon Haynes. And, John, what a great fight. That's what it's all about in the ballroom. That was an exciting fight. And there's always a twist and turn, you know, let's face it. Uh, when you get guys who don't have a lot of fights, they don't know how to deal with certain situations. You don't win, know when you're going to get a fighter who's in over his head, a guy who suddenly finds his second win and comes back and rallies, and I think that's what we had here tonight. Mike McPhail scores the tailing blows. He's standing by with John Scheinman. Mike, it doesn't get any tougher than that. Marlon Hayes, educated right jab, southpaw, tough guy to get through. Yeah, he was pretty tough. He was real tough. Um, I came in this fight on like a two, three day notice. I wasn't all that much in shape for the fight. I got the call on a Monday and we went on ahead and took the fight Tuesday. So, I mean, I ain't had that much training for the fight, but I'm always in the gym and I ran in the snow, you know, so I'm how, tell me how you turned that fight around. The right jab was a big factor for him early. You scored the knockdown. What'd you do to step it up? Well, my corner kept telling me to go to the body, throw left hooks. And then I tried it in one of the rounds, and it worked, so I continued on doing it. Listens to his corner, gets it right. Mike McPhail with a narrow victory. Let's go back to ringside. Thank you, John Scheinman. If it's cold outside for you, the action is hot inside. Here in the ballroom, Mike McPhail knocks Marlon Haynes down in the second round and he moves on to a unanimous decision win no surprise the surprising thing is that mike mcphail took the fight on short notice and fought as well as he did all right folks sit back relax warm up i know it's cold outside inside here in the ballroom we have heated things up back with more ballroom boxing after this ballroom boxing is brought to you by toyota making it happen every day by budweiser the king of beers by Geico Auto Insurance, a 15-minute call could save you 15% or more on your car insurance. By Baltimore's Classic Rock 104.3. And by Philip Morris, working hard to make a difference. Your attention, please, ladies and gentlemen. Would everyone rise for the national anthem by the Sons of Severn? Oh, stay, can you see? By the dawn's early light, what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallant. Back to Ballroom Boxing, Larry Michael with John Saracino. Ballroom Boxing brought to you tonight by Toyota, making it happen every day. Pat O'Malley, get ready to make it happen with the official ring introductions. Pat? Your attention, please, ladies and gentlemen. The Maryland State Athletic Commission Chairman Carl M. Milligan Jr., Executive Director Patrick Pinella, along with Ballroom Boxing on Michaels 8th Avenue, present this eight round bout in the junior welterweight division. The referee in charge is the D.C. Maryland Referee of the Year, Kenny Chevalier. 
Judging the bout, Gary Campanesci, Bill Holmes, and Don Risher. Introducing the boxers. First, to my right, out of the blue corner, wearing white trunks with red, weighing 145 and a half pounds from Las Vegas, Nevada, with a record of six and four, three by knockout. Please welcome a well, Moon Tiger Abdullahi. Out of the red corner to my left, wearing the silver trunks with black, weighing 143 and one quarter pounds from Laurel, Maryland, with a record of nine, one and one, six by knockout. Please welcome Dow Hatchet Matchett. The matchup, the Hatchet Del Matchett against Awell Abdullahi, a very tough man, Abdullahi. Really, the numbers are very even on the tail of the tape, Larry, and we expect that kind of a matchup here between Matchett and Abdullahi. Very competitive fight, at least on paper. Del Matchett, last time in the ring, November 19th, a six round decision over Quentin Williams in Washington, D.C. Last time in for Abdullahi was December the 11th. He lost, in fact, Abdullahi has lost his last three all by decision. By way of Accra, Ghana. Some great fighters from Ghana, John. That's where Zuma Nelson was from. Absolutely. Right? Hey, John, I was testing great you there, buddy. That's right. We moved up. I tell you what, Abdullah looks like he's an Oakland Raiders fan with the color scheme and a skull and crossbones. Excuse me, match it, I mean. Abdullah in the white from Las Vegas, where, let's face it, if you want to be a professional boxer, that's the place to go train. It's exactly a right. A lot of good work. And Kevin Kelly went from Flushing, New York, all the way to Vegas. Hard to take a guy out of the city like that, but he did it. Still match it, a very well-schooled fighter. Abdullah was originally scheduled to fight Marlon Hayes. Very tough guy. Lost a split decision in his last fight against Wilfredo Ruiz, who had won, was 126 of his 30 fights. This is not an easy fight for Dal Matchett. Dal only, Matchett's really had some tough opponents, yes too. He has. His last four with a combined record of 37 and two. Three of them beating un unbeaten. So Del Matchett is used to a ta challenge. This fighter's reluctant to engage John. I know there's supposed to be a feeling out process, but someone's got to make a move. Well, I think both fighters are very evenly matched. And in that case, really, I don't know if one fighter is going to get a big advantage over the other one. You're going to see those kind of exchanges early in the first round. This has become a chess match right off the bat. Two very quick fisted fighters. See the hand speed there of Abdullah, the Moon Tiger, waiting in at 145 and a half. Del Matchett out of the Keystone Boxing Stable. Tough matchup here. These guys are evenly matched, at least early. When you look at these two guys, this is a terrific fight at the club fight level. You look at the skill level of these two fighters. In a lot of club fights across the United States, you'll never see two guys who have this much skill. Y'all match it uh, professional since the beginning of 1998. We'll go over his record when we return. Round one in the books, ballroom boxing. Brought to you by Budweiser, the king of beers. We'll be back. Welcome back to Ballroom Boxing. Larry Michael with John Saraceno. In the ring, Del Matchett going up against Awell Abdullahi.
Let's bring in John Saris, excuse me, John Scheinman for his scorecard after the first round. What do you think, John? Well, it's a very tactical match, obviously. I gave that one by a very narrow decision to Abdullahi. Um, he landed some good left hooks downstairs to the body. I think the person who's going to take over this fight is the person who begins to double the jab instead of single the jab because they're throwing single jabs right now. They'll double it. If they start to double it up and then look to hook off of that, whoever does that, the guy's going to take over. Like you guys said, this is all even. Very well-matched fighters. Thank you, John Scheinman. Sorry about that, John Saracino, getting mixed up with the Johns here at Michael's 8th Avenue. Well, we agreed anyway at Abdullah winning the round narrowly also, and a good point made by John Scheinman. Now you look at Del Matchett, he seems like such a smooth, fluid fighter. How far can he go, John Saracino? Well, I think both of these guys uh, have a lot of ability if they're matched correctly. You know, if they're not fed to the wolves, too soon, so to speak. But you know what? I don't know if either guy can take a big punch. I haven't really seen him get hit hard tonight, so I don't really know about that. We don't know about their staying power. But they certainly look well conditioned, and they look like they have ability. There are so many factors uh, whether a professional athlete makes it, and in boxing, the psychological aspect of it, like with all sports, Who's to know what's going on between the ears of both of those guys? I mean, really, right, take well, a time, at, only time is going to tell. You take a look at Del Matchett, you look at a very cool customer, very well-schooled fighter, but he's against a tough guy here, and Ab well, a well Abdullah. Yeah, there's a lot of fainting going on by both fighters. This is an eight-round matchup scheduled for eight. Both fighters trying to get the other fighter to commit and try and make them pay. I think that's why we've got this chess match in the center of the ring. Very nice stiff jab by Del Matchett. Follows the right hand and a right hand counter by the Moon Tiger, a well up Dulai. I don't know that either fighter is that big a puncher, Larry. I don't know, you've got the records there with the knockout percentages, but I think they're sharp punchers, accurate punchers, but I don't know if they have natural power. April 9th, the last knockout for Del the Hatchet Matchet. And for Abdullah, boy, you gotta go back. Gotta go back to 1992 for his last knockout. We'll be back with more in the ballroom. Welcome back to the ballroom at Michael's 8th Avenue in Glen Burnie, Maryland. For more information on ballroom boxing, check us out on the web, www.ballroomboxing.com. An invitation to join us for our next bout here in the ballroom. Coming your way March the 23rd. For tickets or more information, call 410-766-7474. Larry Michael, along with John Saracino, ringside, as always, here in the ballroom. In the black trunks, it is Del Matchett from Laurel, Maryland, the Hatchet, and Awell Abdullah from Las Vegas by way of Accra, Ghana, in the white trunks with the red trim. Abdullah keeps landing that short left hook on the inside. It's coming so quickly, Matchett can't even duck it. Let's bring in John Scheinman, the third member of our crew once again tonight. John, two rounds in the books in a very tactical matchup. Matchett got back in the fight in that last round. It was, a, again, a tough round to score, but I have it all even 1919. We're seeing Matchett change his tactics here in this round, and he's looking to land flash combinations, particularly left-right combinations, and then step away. And so far, he's being very successful. I think he's having a good round with these new tactics. Uh, you know where has frozen over because Saracino and Scheinman agree again. I've got it the same score, the same rounds. Nice lead right by Matchett. But really, Abdullah unfazed by anything from Matchett so far in this fight. Well, both fighters don't seem to be that concerned about the power of the other. Del Matchett lost for the first time in his career back on June the 25th. In Connecticut to Anthony Chase, a four-round decision loss. The only loss of his career. This is not as much a fist fight as it is a boxing match. And that's not a criticism, that's a compliment. Very well executed one. 
not always the most pleasing for people to watch necessarily, but a, a real fight fan can get into a fight like this. Very strategic. Fans here at the bar were very well educated in boxing, John. I think they appreciate this kind of action as well as the knockdown, drag out fights. In fact, right now, Del Matchett being uh, able to tattoo the body of Abdullah, who wears his trunks very high up, about up to his chest. Yeah, he's got him up too high. And where's Matchett's jab? He's really abandoned it here in the third round. He's throwing lead left hooks at times, right hands. There he tried to double up in the jab. Del Matchett has not been able to drop the hatchet so far in this fight. We'll be back. Welcome back to Ballroom Boxing. Larry Michael with John Saraceno. It is great to be with you again tonight from the ballroom, award-winning ballroom boxing. Seen coast to coast on the dish by 10 million plus fans. Good right hand by Matchett. As always, we originate from Michael's 8th Avenue in Glen Burnie, Maryland. In the ring right now, Del Matchett, the hatchet, the black trunks with the silver trim going up against Awell Abdullahi out of Las Vegas in the white trunks, the Moon Tiger as he is known. Either Abdullahi is growing older before our eyes or they left a lot of grease on the top of his head. He's green in front of us. Beginning to open up a little bit here, John Saraceno. This has been a tactical matchup so far. It has. I guess match it probably has a slight edge here for the first three rounds, but it's a close fight. And still, obviously, anybody's fight. A little swelling around the right eye of Dell Matchett. Dula has a real good defensive posture, holds his hands high, always busy, hard guy to hit. Now Matchett is really attacking the body now. Now you know why Abdullah has those trunks pulled up around his nipples. <laughs> Matchett very, very intense right now. Looking for that right hand. You see him cocking that right hand, John. John Scheinman with us as always. John, how do you have it scored? 29-28, Matchett's pulling ahead here. There's a lot of old adages in boxing and Matchett's following one of them, which is be first. And that's what he's found is really effective against Abdullahi. Get your shots off first. He's leading and landing in every one of these exchanges and he's getting away before Abdullahi can counter effectively. John Scheinman with added commentary tonight from the ballroom. You know, John Scheinman, recognized locally as the journalist of the year in boxing, want to tip our hats to John Scheinman, huh? Congratulations, he deserves it. I mean, everybody's getting a award, Scheinman, except for me and Saraceno, for I, crying out loud. I just wish he'd give me a good stock pick. I'll tell you something, when I heard that I won the award, I demanded a recount. <laughs> of course, no monetary reward to John Scheinman. Don't match it, though. Really beginning to pick the heat up on the body of Awell Abdullah. And I think Matchett is really he's wearing him down. Taking the fight over the last round and a half with the body attack. Uh, he's bigger and he's stronger, and he's really opposing his will on Good Abdullah. Right hand by Matchett. Matchett just keeps on coming. Abdullah, the great body, not effective offensively. We'll be back. Fifth round here in the ballroom, Larry Michael with John Saraceno, Del Matchett, and Awell Abdullah. This fight is scheduled for eight rounds, the midway point. John Saraceno, how do you have this fight scored midway through? Matchett coming on stronger, 39-37 through four. This match has really improved and increased his body attack in the last couple of rounds. I think they really turned the fight his way. So Abdullah fires away with some bad intentions. He bounced. Match it off the ropes. Match it stumbling around a little bit here this round. Well, there's Matchett. that right hand, though. It keeps nailing him to the ribs by Matchett. 
That's you can't forget about that body attack. It really has been the difference for him in the fight. Body punching is a lost art for a lot of fighters. But Matchett is showing uh, when he puts it to work, it can be a thing of beauty. Very quick hands Matchett has. Just quicker to the punch than Abdullah. Well, Abdullah slowing down a little bit, Larry. He's getting wider with his punching. He's looping his shots. And Matchett is countering when he has to. Dulai eating a lot of leather. His legs all his legs did buckle that time off the right hand of Del Matchett. Yeah, it was a counter right hand. Didn't quite hit him flush enough. A little swelling under the left eye of Del Matchett, but he is in command right now in the fifth round. You know, Dulai, I mentioned before he had a knockout since 1992. That was in Ghana. He had a long layoff, a five-year layoff beginning uh, after 1993. Came back in 98, had three fights last year, lost three decisions, a pair of four-rounders and an eight-rounder. Big body shot by Abdullah that time. I don't think he recognized he might have hurt Del Matchett a little bit with that body shot right to the midsection. And Matchett is using just enough of the ring to make it a little bit tricky. A slip by the Ghanan. I like Matchett. I think he's taking what uh, what Abdullah has to offer, and that's the body attack. And if Matchett uh, disregards that, I think he'll give the fight right back to Abdullah. Del Matchett, only 22 years old, out of Laurel, Maryland. Kid's got a pretty good, good future, John. Good young prospect. At 22, these are one of these guys that might grow in the barroom on to bigger and better things. You know, we're starting to see more and more fighters better equipped in the series. Fifth round winding down. We'll be back with more ballroom boxing from Michaels 8th Avenue, brought to you by Geico Direct. A 15 minute call that save you 15% or more in your car insurance. We'll be back after this. It's ballroom boxing on home team sports, brought to you by Baltimore's Classic Rock 104.3. Hi again, everybody. Larry Michael along with John Saracino. John Scheinman with us as well. Dill Matchett and Awell Abdullah in the ring. John Scheinman, how do you have it scored? Well, Matchett's beginning to pull away in these middle rounds. I have him ahead 49-46 now after five rounds. You know, I just don't think Abdullah has adjusted to what, to what Matchett has done. And he's trying to throw sweeping left hooks into a guy who is circling to his left. And it's just not going to get it done. I think Abdullah needs to change his tactics. I think he should try to crowd Matchett's left side and come forward and throw to the body. But right now, he's just standing right in front of him taking punishment. John Scheinman with his outlook on the fight. You know, John Saracino, uh, Del Matchett uh, has really kept the aggressive uh, uh, onslaught up for the last three, four rounds. This guy's in great condition. What a pace he's set. Really and, has. Uh, you know what, when you're in his kind of condition and you can fight like this three minutes of every round, you know, you're gonna get a lot of favor with the judges anyway. You're gonna gain close rounds. Slipping punches, doing a great job defensively, though that left hand is Wayne Lowe. He's tasted the uh, right hand of Abdullah earlier. Maybe he feels that Abdullah can't hurt him. Match it just a little bit too quick and too strong for Abdullah. Abdullah, though, has a puncher's chance. You can see just by the body, the guy is ripped and strong. A nice body shot there by Abdullah. Again, both fighters content to stand in the middle of the ring and trade. Hey John Abdullah is trying to set up the uppercut. I can see it every time Matchett comes there in. Is. There it was right it's there. Rare. Yep, but it hit him on the shoulder. He's trying to set it up, and Matchett just keeps coming in, leading with his head down low. Yep. Abdullah still has that opportunity available too. The fact that Abdullah doesn't have a lot of punching power. It's the punches you don't see, of course, are the ones that hurt you. Match it runs into something here, who knows? A 
Abdullah certainly is ripped. What a physique he has. Yeah, it looks a little like me, huh? Yeah, those washboard like abs look yeah. just like you. Well, you know, I train with a guy. What can I say? <laughs> you are a stud. Well, match it a very methodical fighter at this point. Even though in this round, I believe Abdullah showing more offense than he's shown all fight. He's had a better round. A little bit of a mouse under the left eye of Del Matchett. We'll be back with more in the ballroom. Uh, the chandeliers are polished here in the ballroom tonight. And in the corner of Awel Abdullah, referee Kenny Chevalier instructing the corner to wipe away some of that grease off the forehead of Abdullah. And this fight resumes. Round seven, scheduled for eight. This is in the welterweight division. Del Matchett from Laurel, Maryland in the black trunks with the silver trim. Going up against Awel Abdullah from Las Vegas, Nevada. Wow, I tell you what. Kenny Shivani is stepping in as Matchett actually. Matchett almost stepped in our hands. Stepped off the ring apron right into our lap. As you can see us here at ringside in the bottom left-hand corner of your screen as John Saracino and I sit here, and Del Matchett did almost stepped on our notes, John. Call your attorney. <laughs> well, the video doesn't lie, John. <laughs> there we go. We got him. Do lie a little upset that Kenny Chevalier stepped in, but when a fighter steps Ooh. outside the ring like that, he's got to step in. That was a nice right hand by Matchett. He keeps landing that flush on Abdullah's nose. One thing about Matchett, holding his hands low right now. If Abdullah, had, if Abdullah had any snap in his punches, he'd make him pay. Instead, it's Matchett. Del Matchett beating him to the punch. Boy, I mean, you know what? I would not want to fight this guy Matchett because he is all over the ring. He's like a water bug. But it's not it's not ineffective movement. A lot of guys get in the ring and they run around. They don't do anything. But he's got a plan when he's giving him lateral movement. That's the punch, move, punch, move. And yep. you know what? It's a, he's a very difficult guy to fight. So let's face it. Abdullah is doing the best he can tonight. He can punch on the move with either hand, too. Yeah. So I like Matcha. I think he's got a lot of tools. I hope we get to see him again soon. Maybe that March show. March 23rd, the next ballroom boxing card here at Michael's 8th Avenue. Crowd certainly in the corner of Del Matchett from nearby Laurel, Maryland. D.C. Baltimore area is a hotbed for boxing. Yeah, a lot of fighters here, a lot of gyms. Even though the fight game not in very good shape right now. And it's going to get worse before it gets better. Well, sometimes it has to. This is true. Matcha continues to move forward, now using the jab. He showed a full arsenal, hadn't he? he throws all the textbook punches. Well, you know, I think we've seen him throw is the uppercut. I don't think he's really used that much. He's had Abdullah on the outside most of the night. Folks from Keystone Boxing were concerned with the toughness of, Dubla, of Abdullah. He has certainly shown a lot of toughness tonight. We'll be back with the eighth and final round. In the this is it, the eighth and final round. The eighth and final round here in the ballroom for Del Matchett and Awel Abdullah. Larry Michael, John Saracino, John Scheinman. Third man on the broadcast team. How do you have it scored going into the final round? 68-65 for Del Matchett. As long as he doesn't do anything crazy, and I've seen him fight a lot, and he's not the kind of guy to do something like that. He's going to box his way to victory here. Um, it's just an outstanding performance. Like you both said, he shows all the tools. I think if I had to have one criticism of Del Matchett, I would like to see him jab more when he is, quote, unquote, taking time Big off. Big left hand by Del Matchett rattles the skull of a well Abdullah. And we noted earlier that Matchett wasn't jabbing enough. 
Trying to force the issue a little bit here in the eighth and final round. And he's dropping his left almost as to invite Abdullah to come to throw the right so he can throw the counter right and finish him off. I don't know if that's what he's really doing, but it looks that way. A body shot by Del Matchett. He continues Ma to go to the body. Matchett fighting here like he's behind. I mean, he's not, you know, running around the ring trying to preserve the lead. He's right in there. I'm not so sure that's even a smart move. I've How do got you a, have it scored? Well, I've got a head, a head by three points, as does John, but, you know, I think it's pretty clear cut that he's ahead in the fight. I mean, why take a chance? A nice left hand there by Matchett and a right hand by Matchett. I think he's tasted the power of Abdullah and he is not yeah, fearful. But you never know. Why take the chance? I mean, you know, he's got he's got some pride. I think that what Hatchet wants is a knockout. That's I think what, that's, that's what, what he wants. It, yeah, that's what it looks like. He's trying to hit him with that right hand right up the middle. See if John Scheinman has to fight. Maybe maybe he can ask him if he was looking for a knockout at the end. Because he would seem to be comfortably in front right now. Abdullah almost a, a resigned look on his face. Crunching left hand by Del Matchett, who has taken many chunks out of a well Abdullah tonight. Yeah, nice jab there by Abdullah. Left hook by Matchett. He's really turning over his shots, setting down. Another great body punch. Good right hand by Matchett. Dulai keeps coming forward, yeah. firing out punches. Dulai has never been knocked out in his career, and it will not happen tonight in the ballroom. But it would appear Del Matchett with a very convincing victory, really turning up the heat in the eighth and final round. Good performance by Laurel, Maryland's Del Matchett. We'll be back with the decision in this fight after a timeout. So a very workmanlike performance apparently by Del Matchett, a well Abdullah, a very courageous opponent. Let's see who won this fight. Your attention please, ladies and gentlemen. We have a unanimous decision. Judge Risher scores it 77-75. Judge Campaneshi scores it 78-74. And Judge Holmes scores it 79-73. And the winner by unanimous decision, Dow Hatchet Matchett! No question, even though Abdullah protests the decision, Del Matchett got it done in the ring, John Sarris. You know, no complaints there. Well, I don't know what, what he's holding his hands up for, because if he th thinks he won that, won that fight, he wasn't in the same ring the night that we watched. Clear-cut decision for Del Matchett. Very impressive, went the route, showed good stamina, boxing skills, a top-notch prospect. Del Matchett runs his record to 9-1-1 one, one with five knockouts. Stay tuned, Ballroom Boxing returns. Well, folks, another interesting night of action here in the ballroom. Larry Michael with John Saraceno. Thanks for watching, John. Del Matchett, an up-and-comer. We saw a dynamic young fighter here tonight. I tell you what, we saw a lot of good young fighters here tonight, and we expect to see more come March. Hey, March 23rd, the next boxing action here at Michaels 8th Avenue. Until then, for John Saraceno, I'm Larry Michael. We'll see you next time for Ballroom Boxing.